Late last week, news broke that Oklahoma and Texas have officially announced their early arrival to the SEC in 2024. The Longhorns and Sooners won't have to wait much longer. Originally, it was thought 2025. It's sped up a little bit. They'll make it in in 2024, and the news is already making an impact on the recruiting trail. Even though both teams finished top 10 last cycle, they're gearing up for the big move now. OU and Texas can tell recruits you will play the entirety of your career in the SEC. No more negative recruiting from rival coaches. At OU or Texas, if you want to play at the top level and go to the NFL, you can do that here. You can compete against the best players in the country week in, week out. And if you can play, the NFL scouts will find you. Recruiting at a high level will set the tone for SEC success as these teams are counting down the days before they join. Let's bring on national recruiting analyst Sam Spiegelman. We're going to talk a little bit of Texas and Oklahoma right now, of course. It's fitting. Uh, Texas is trending for some top 100 targets. Let's take a look. You got Micah Hudson, the number three wide receiver in the country. Kobe Black at number 19. Corian Gibson checks in at 64, and at number 130, cornerback Selman Bridges. So, Sam, you're the man with all the intel. Let's start at the top with Micah Hudson, the number five overall player in the country. Tell me the latest on his recruitment. Texas is training right one of the best in the state, offensive skill position player in the state, and talking about their transition to the SEC, well, this is a battle that I expect Texas to win, but given their track record of signing guys like Jonte Cook, um, the electric, do-it-all, versatile wide receivers, we just watched the Super Bowl last night, and we see these receivers like Devontae Smith that can go over the middle, they can stretch the field deep. Well, Micah Hudson does that extremely high clip. That's why he's wanted by schools from coast to coast, but I like where Texas sits. Um, you know, Texas's staff went, some, went over went some changes. Steve Sarkeesian is, is the person who's stepping up and, and filling that role as a lead recruiter for a lot of these in-state guys, and it's sitting really well to know that even though the position coaches are changing, head man is still making me a priority, and that's definitely the case with Micah Hudson, he's been to Texas quite a bit the last couple of months, and he's going to head to Texas Tech when uh, the dead period ends in March. All right, we'll see if Arch Manning effect can play into his recruitment. You also got Kobe Black, the number 19 overall prospect in the country, in the number two corner. Is Texas trending with him right now? Yeah, look at look at that list. Kobe Black, Corian Gibson, Selman Bridges. Those are three of the best guys in state, four-star DBs at cornerback, at safety. In this particular situation, you got a guy like Kobe Black that can play all positions in the secondary. You got Selman Bridges, a six foot three corner, and Corian Gibson is one of the fastest players in the state of Texas. And I would say right now, Texas is in the driver's seat for all three of these four-star DBs. And um, like I said, you know, these are national guys. These are guys that are going to explore their options when, when the dead period ends and they're going to go out of state to some SEC schools. But like you said, they're in recruiting battles with other SEC schools like LSU and Alabama and Texas A&M in their own state. And now Texas has some, some bragging rights that they didn't have. You know, it was all in theory before. You know, I can remember talking to Arch Manning or Jonte Cook about going to the SEC. But now that the plan is in place, I think it puts Texas on that level foot schools, especially A&M in, the, in their own state. Yeah, I mean, you look at Corey and Gibson checking in here at 64. I mean, he's got teams like Alabama, Auburn, Ohio State, Miami. They're all recruiting him. How is Texas going to be able to keep him in state? Yeah, well, I think that Texas has put itself in the position early on. Um, Chris Gilbert, who used to be on their staff, has has known Corian since he was playing youth football. He really built that foundation, especially for Steve Sarkeesian and Terry Joseph and Blake Gideon, who are really newcomers to Texas when they arrived in Austin. Having Chris Gilbert to kind of forge that foundation, it kind of it laid the footwork. And, and like I said earlier, Steve Sarkeesian has stepped up. Corian Gibson told me about visiting Auburn and Alabama, but no visit did he rave of spending all that time with Steve Sarkeesian in Austin, which has been uh, a growing theme over the last couple of months with one of the state's best. So I, I like where, where Texas sits, and a, large, a big reason why is Steve Sarkeesian's role. And as they get ready for the SEC, these coaches seem to have a good grip on where this program is heading, and I think it's felt by the recruits. All right, let's stay on the DB theme with cornerback Selman Bridges. Uh, what is the latest with his recruitment, and where does Texas stand with Bridges? Yeah, this is Texas is a new offer for Selman Bridges, who wasted no time getting on campus. He saw Texas, he saw Texas A&M, TCU has, and, and can, will continue to be in the mix. 
Um, this is one of those regional recruiting battles that, you know, you expect him not too far from home. Yeah, he might explore his options. He's got an Alabama offer. He's got a USC offer, but he seems to be very privy to, to not only Texas, but also Texas A&M, which is certainly still recruiting at a high clip. And you know, he lives an hour outside of Austin. His teammate, Micah Hudson, has been to Texas quite a bit. Every single time he brings in the teammate, Selman Bridges. I think right now Texas is in the driver's seat for for not only Mike but also Selman. But these are these are still recruitments that are going to take a while to go. And but I think early on you have to like where the Longhorn stands. Yeah, and you're at all these events. You're at the All Star Games. You're at the seven on sevens. You hit the combines. You're you're at high schools. When you talk to recruits, what's the overall impact of Texas and Oklahoma making the early move to the SEC? Well, on three put out a graphic right around signing day. Um, I think that that pretty much summed it all up when it's just an it's an overwhelming um, statistic of the amount of players that sign with SEC teams that eventually play from Saturdays on to Sundays. And ultimately, take NIL out of the equation, <laughs> take relationships out of the equation. These kids are football players that want to go and get developed at their position and then go play at the next level, thrive in college and then play at the professional level. Um, and with Texas joining the SEC, with Oklahoma joining the SEC, they automatically fit under that umbrella of the SEC by by the same way that Vanderbilt and Texas A and M have. Um, it, it, the conference just comes with a whole much whole lot of prestige. That um, it, at this point, you know, in 2023, kids are kids are very aware of this. They know that the SEC comes with. Um, you know, the Mel Kuyper juniors of the world and <laughs> Daniel Jeremiah is talking about scouting Georgia's and Alabama's and, and now Texas and Oklahoma's pro days that they'll play on the biggest games on Saturday. Um, they'll be the first stop for, for all these scouts when it's their time to, to declare for the draft. And when you play in big games on Saturday, we see how it translates to Sunday. Look at the SEC for Jalen Hurts, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith. They're all from a handful of SEC schools. Um, that's not to say that other players don't make plays and, and they're not, that's not routes to the NFL, but the SEC is, is pretty much the go-to when you start thinking about, about the draft and the NFL. Yeah, and now with the news that they're heading there early, only more firepower for these two teams to use on the recruiting trail. Now let's talk a little Oklahoma recruiting. As you can see, they are also recruiting right now at an SEC level. Nigel Smith at the top of the list, checking in at number 50. You also have Danny Coye, the edge, out of Oklahoma, checks in at 102, 105, linebacker Peyton Pierce, and at number 217, wide receiver Bryant Wesco. Now, he's 217 on the on three consensus, but on three has Bryant Wesco almost 200 spots higher at 27 overall. So let's start at the top with number 50 overall, Nigel Smith. Now, He's trending to Oklahoma on the recruiting prediction machine right now. But, Sam, my question to you is, who's the biggest competition OU is facing? Right. I, I placed that RPM for, for Nigel Smith last month after another visit back to Norman. Um, that's been a, a constant theme in his recruitment since he was an underclassman. But we also know that there are some other major national players involved with the top 50 defensive linemen from Melissa. He just made his first visit to Oregon spent some time with Dan Lanning, Coach Teoti, um, the defensive line coach out there in Eugene, and he raved about the, the similarities between Melissa High School and, and Eugene, Oregon. Um, he's been to Ohio State a ton. He's got a fantastic relationship with Larry Johnson, the defensive line coach in Columbus. And we talked about Micah Hudson hitting Lubbock when the spring opens up after the dead period. Nigel Smith, another top 50 player in the country and one of the best in the state of Texas, will be seeing Joey McGuire and the Red Raiders um, when March opens up for visits, that's two top 50 players in the whole country going down to West Texas to see what Joey McGuire's got cooking over there at Texas Tech. <laughs> All right, moving on to number 102 overall edge, Danny Okoye. This is an interesting one for you, Sam, because Okoye is the number one overall prospect in the state of Oklahoma. But if I got this right, the Sooners actually have some ground to make up for Okoye. Yeah, in state, I think I think the Pokes are, are sitting in a really good spot with Danny Okoye. But, but beyond that, the S He's come calling for this prolific edge rusher from Oklahoma. Um, he's already been to Knoxville. I think that's definitely a team that's circled that we all need to be watching. Um, I expect him to be there later this spring. And Akoi, the number one player in Oklahoma, defensive lineman. Number two, Xavier Sims, another defensive lineman. Oklahoma is in the mix, but another possible out-of-state lean with Michigan State, having a lot of success recruiting Oklahoma the last couple of years. Um, but we're talking about Oklahoma making that transition to the SEC. 
two defensive linemen from your home state. Those are those are recruiting battles that you need to win. Brent mm-hmm. Venables obviously knows that. It, listen, it's February 13th. Um, there's still plenty of time for Brent Venables, but those are two major pieces. If I'm Brent Venables and the Sooners getting ready for the SEC, you want to clean up around the def- defensive line and upgrade in the trenches to get ready for that transition in conferences. All right, number 105, big-time hitter, linebacker Peyton Pierce. Where do things stand yeah, with him this, and the Sooners? This is going to be a really interesting recruiting battle. I think Oklahoma made a really significant move with Peyton Pierce uh, last month when he was on campus. Um, we talked about Brent Venables and his defensive-minded staff. Um, I think you know Peyton Pierce counted five former linebackers that played under Brent Venables in Norman um, that were helping him game plan and showing him what the, the future would look like in Norman on the Oklahoma defense. And I think Oklahoma – may be the team to beat. Now, Notre Dame was trending on the RPM, but there was a significant coaching move that we all need to watch out for. James Laronitis, we all know a famous Buckeye that we all watched, now joins Ohio State's coaching staff. Ryan Day offers Peyton Pierce, and that's his first visit he's got set up after the dead period in March. Um, James Laronitis, Ryan Day, um, Jim Knowles, all recruiting Peyton Pierce. I think it's turning into an Oklahoma-Ohio State battle for one of the best linebackers in the country out of Dallas. All right. Then it, outside the top 200, you have Bryant Wesco, who, as I said, at on three, we have is a borderline five star at number 27 overall. So the wide receiver out of Texas, I'm sure that the rankings will kind of come in to configure themselves the way that we think they will. But for now, what is Bryant Wesco doing with his recruitment? Who's he looking at? Well, this is just a, you know, you got to give on three love when, when it's due. And this is someone that on three, our our director of scouting is very high on early on. And I think the rest of the industry will catch up eventually. Um, I've gotten to see him play last month and he is, he is a big, long receiver that can go up and get it. He's got strong hands and he can run the field really well. I think his offer sheet will begin to catch up to his ranking, at least on, on three in due time. Um, He's visited TCU and he's visited Oklahoma. Those are two of the regional schools that have kind of built a strong early foundation with Bryant Wesco. I like where TCU and Oklahoma sit early on, but I do think this is the Texas A&Ms and some other big guns uh, across the country are going to all get involved with Bryant Wesco before it's all said and done. All right. Last cycle, OU in Texas signed some franchise quarterbacks in Arch Manning and Jackson Arnold, and they're essential to this transition that they're going to be making to the SEC. So, Sam, my question to you is, Who are some transitional type impact recruits this cycle within the state of Texas that OU and Texas could add to their roster for instant impact help when they make that move next year to the SEC? Honestly, only one player came to mind, Josh. To me, five-star defensive end, Colin Simmons, the number Mm -hmm. one edge. He's the difference. He likes Texas. He likes OU. He's also considering Alabama, LSU, Georgia, TCU, and Tennessee, among others. Well, I don't think there's any player better at that position in the 2024 class than Colin Simmons. He just won MVP of the state championship game at the highest level um, in Texas high school state football, had multiple sacks, multiple in the fourth quarter alone. Um, he's on every one of these teams' boards very high. And if you go into the SEC, you want someone that can wreck the game at the most premium position on defense. If they can get Colin Simmons, I think Oklahoma or Texas will be ready to go for the SEC in a few years. Thank you for watching. Make sure you smash that subscribe button for me and remember to check out all the videos on the On3 YouTube page.